Welcome to the third video on translation. So we've been talking about protein synthesis, and in the last video we talked about the first part, transcription, which is copying the DNA instructions or the code onto a message, and that's messenger RNA, mRNA. In this video, we're talking about translation, which is reading that mRNA message that comes out of the nucleus and turning that into a protein. So how is the protein made? Now, I hope you're getting familiar with your base pairs because we're gonna use those a lot in this explanation because it's important. So we have our mRNA strand down the bottom here, and you'll notice that the base pairs go across, G, C, C, A, U, G, U, U, C, and they're split up into groups of three here. Now, these groups of three are called codons, and the body reads this mRNA message in groups of three as codons. So the person example would be, say, the fat cat did not run. Each letter is like a letter of a base pair, and the words together are like the codons. So the body reads the words just like we do. So the body doesn't read each base pair individually in the same way that we don't read each letter individually. We don't spell this out, T-H-E-F-A-T-C-A-T. -E -A -A we just read it as groups of three. Now, each of these codons is going to be matched to one amino acid. So a protein is just made up with one amino acid after another. So this strand of individual amino acids, and there are 20 different ones that we could do, make up the protein. So you read a set of three on your mRNA, and each three is going to be matched up to one amino acid, and eventually the next three will put a different amino acid on, and so on, and so on, and so on, to make one long protein chain of amino acids, sometimes called a polypeptide chain. Now there are 64 different base pairs that you could possibly have if you work out that A, C, G, and T, all the combinations, there's 64 of them. However, there are 20 different amino acids we could have, so we're gonna cover how that works exactly. Let me explain this a little bit more in a table. Here we have all the combinations of U, C, A, and G that we could possibly have in mRNA. So there's one, two, three different parts to our codon. And if we match up U, U, say, and G, we're gonna get one particular codon. Or for example, A, U, G, if we go to A, then U, then G, that's gonna create one particular, and in this case, a start amino acid. But you'll also notice that we can have different codes which lead to the same amino acid. So for example, C, C, C is PRO, and C, C, G is also PRO. So these things, have, though they're a different codon, make the same amino acid. Now the reason for this is that there's degeneracy within the code sometimes. So sometimes your DNA will stuff up, and by accident, instead of having C, C, G, it's going to write C, C, C. And it's more likely, because there's only a few amino acids, only 20, compared to 64 combinations, it's more likely that you're going to get the right amino acid and your protein is going to end up working because it'll fold up right, everything will operate as it should. So this phase, redundancy due to degeneracy within the code, is some phrase you can remember, which simply means sometimes you have degenerate code in your DNA, doesn't work out right, and so there's some redundancy built in in the fact that the same protein might get made even if you have a few mistakes in there. So that you don't need to be 100% accurate all of the time. The point you need to take out of this is that with 20 amino acids in 64 different combinations, if you make a mistake, it's less likely to matter. That's the take home message and remember the saying in red for writing down in your exams. So now let's look at how this process actually happens of turning these combinations of base pairs, these codons, into amino acids. So there's a few steps here I'll cover. First of all, you have a codon, that might be AUG. Then we've got something which will match up to that called an anticodon, makes sense, it's the opposite. So for example, AUG would be matched with UAC. So it's got the opposite. So something will come along, these big purple things come along and see if they can match up to these codons. If they can, they stay there. If they can't, they'll carry on going along and trying to find one that does match up. These purple things, which try to match up with the codons, with their anticodons, are called tRNA. They're transport RNA. They're also made up of RNA, but they come along, they have their code there, and they're going to try and match up with your mRNA. Now, the reason tRNA is helpful in making a protein is they have an amino acid attached to the top. So they're coming along, their codon here will relate, like we just learned, to one of 20 specific amino acids when they find a perfect fit, a codon, anticodon fit that matches just right, they're going to get their amino acid and connect it onto the polypeptide chain to continue to make this protein. And all of this goes on in the ribosome. So you've got one ribosome, which brings together the mRNA. 
It grabs a whole lot of these tRNA things, which all have anti-codons on them. It tries to match up the tRNA with the right codon. When it finds one that fits, it puts its amino acid next in the chain. Then when it finds a next codon, anti-codon fit, it will put that amino acid in the chain. And these tRNA molecules are bought in, they transport these amino acids to the ribosome so that you can make a protein with their amino acids. Finally, like I know you've figured out, this polypeptide chain folds up to make a protein or an enzyme what we need to make our cells work. All right, so here's what you need to know. You need to know that mRNA is made up of codons. I hope you remember this, that's three letters each. And although there are 64 combinations you could have of letters, there are only 20 different amino acids. And the phrase you wanna remember, this is the third thing, there is redundancy due to degeneracy within the code. All that means is saying that if you get the code a little bit wrong, hopefully you'll still get the same amino acid being made and your protein will turn out the same and you'll be fine. Now when we're making an acid, the fourth thing is that each codon is matched up with an anticodon. This is its opposite match, like we've found all through this topic. Now tRNA are these purple things here, which have the anticodon, and they transport an amino acid towards the ribosome to match up their anticodon with the codon of mRNA. Then the ribosome, if this fits, will grab the amino acid from the top of this tRNA and put it on the polypeptide chain to make a protein. Let's look at a question now. So here we want to discuss where and how the mRNA strand is translated into a protein. So in our discussion, we're going to go through the key roles of the ribosome, tRNA, the codons and anticodons, down the bottom, polypeptide chains, and start and stop codons, which we covered in the last video. So I'll explain how they come into things here. All right, so we've got our picture. I'm going to use this to help explain the answer. And I'm going to go through the written answer to say what you'd write. Although you can draw this and it can honestly be quite helpful to have a diagram in your explanation. It shows you know what you're talking about. So to start with, translation, good definition, is where the code carried on the mRNA is used to create a functional protein. It's the purpose of everything. The mRNA travels to a ribosome, which we have here, which matches the mRNA codons down the bottom with the tRNA anticodons. I'm going to carry this explanation on on this page. So every tRNA molecule has an anticodon on it, which the ribosome matches up with the mRNA's codon. The codons and the anticodons are complementary, means they match up. So because this tRNA has an amino acid attached on the top here, that relates to its anticodon, it means the correct amino acid is going to be added onto the polypeptide chain to make the protein. So they asked us about stop and start codons. So a start codon is the three bases down the bottom on mRNA that begins the translation process. So there's always one of these at the start of every single protein because that's how it would start it when you did transcription. And in the same way, a stop codon are the three bases that end the translation process or the transcription process as well. So it's always at the end of a protein. So it tells everything just to stop. Now, finally, if you want to conclude, you could, say that, you could say that bonds are formed between the amino acids. These are actually called peptide bonds, just if you wanted to know. And this creates a polypeptide chain, which is released by the ribosome and folds itself up into a 3D structure and thus a functional protein. So this is the process of translation.